All right guys, today I'm going to show you the material node setup and textures that I use to create this image. I know the lesson looks long, but in the beginning I'm going to give an overview of the entire lesson in less than two minutes. But if you're still confused after that, you can continue and watch the entire lesson, which I, where I will explain UV unwrapping and everything else in more detail. All right, hope you enjoyed the lesson. All right, so this is the material for this helmet. So basically it's a glossy shader with roughness 0.4 that gets its color from this mix RGB node which gets its color from these two textures. This one is the green stuff with the scratches on it and this one is the same one except it's white. It still has the same scratches. And the way the material chooses which color to use where is using this image texture which you can see here and which plugs into the factor node and mixes it. So this texture here, the green one, is applied where the image is black and this one is the white stuff which I've painted over the edges which get the most bumps, the most wear and tear and they will occur where the white has been painted. So these both overlap so the scratches on these two are the same and the way they overlap is because they both get their scaling from this mapping node which uses the UV unwraps from the mesh and it's scaled up to three times and I'm also using a bump map so the bump map gets its uh, texture from this one which is base which is what I call the uh, tileable displace and that's the same textures as the green and the white except it's been made black and white with a mid-tone grey for the default surface and a black for the scratches which indent into the surface. Now if you're still confused at this point about how this thing works, keep moving on. I'll explain it in much greater detail but if you don't then I suppose you're done. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to uh, do it with the helmet. So first you need to get this object which is using this node set up here, pretty basic, and I am just created a new image so you'll go create new image and then call it, you'll press on this to create the new image and then call it the helmet factor map because that's what it's going to be doing, it's going to control the factor of how much white and how much green is used and then you are going to tap into edit mode and unwrap your object after adding seams I won't go too much into unwrapping, but basically you want the seams on places where you're not going to be looking. I'll go back into material mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the node setup. So I'm just going to go find a texture, image texture, and plug it into that. And now we're going to open, say, uh, this. And that's a bit big for the helmet so what I'm going to do is drag this over and apply a image texture which, no wait, no I'm going to go to vector mapping and I'm going to scale this up to 3 but you can see that doesn't work because it doesn't know, the mapping doesn't know where to get the texture coordinates from. So I'm just going to find inputs, texture coordinates, and drag UV into there. So it knows to use the UVs we've unwrapped. Now you, it's not very visible at the moment because we haven't got a bump map. So what I want is to get a vector bump. Drag that over. And then I want that to get it from an image texture. I'll just shift D this, drag the color into the height. And then from this, I will go for tileable displace, which is this one here. Just gray and black. Gray doesn't extrude at all. Black extrudes inwards. And as you can see, it's very strong. So I'll just crank the strength down to 0.2. And now it's looking pretty good. However, the indentations don't match up with the scratches, as you can see. So we need to plug this mapping node into the image texture. 
So they're both scaled up three times, otherwise they won't align. And that looks much better. So now we want to be able to add white scratches around the ed edges to add wear and tear beyond just the usual scratches. Makes it look much better. So what we want to do is shift D this. And this one is going to be the uh, tileable scratches image, which if I show you here, is just this. It's much more worn than the uh, than this, which is what we're using for the rest of it. So you can see that if I plug this in here, I'll just align the mapping node in with that. And now you can see this is much more worn, but we don't want this everywhere. We just want this on the edges. So how do we apply more than one texture to the glossy if we can only plug one into the color node? Well, we go to color and we get a mix RGB which will then plug both of them in and they'll both work together to make this texture. So currently it's got a texture uh, factor value here. If I go down to this, crank it down to zero, it'll go 100% this, but the factor determines how much of the second image texture is applied. So if I go one, that'll be 100% of the second. And if I go 0 0.5, it'll be 50-50. But I don't want that. I want it to selectively apply this second one 100% around the edges, or slightly less, but then the first one I want it to apply 100% everywhere else. So what we need is to get this new texture. I'll just shift D this, drag the color into the FAC, but then this, we don't want that image. We want now, new one, what did we call it? FAC, helmet FAC map. So if I go into this, we're going to be painting white stuff around the edges, which will be the wear and tear. So I'll just tab out. Then I'm going to apply this FAC, helmet FAC map. And then we're going to take this into texture paint. If you're not in rent, if you're not in material view, you'll go into solid and it'll just show you the FAC map. But since I'm in material, it'll show us what the material says, which currently is 100% of this thingy. So I'll just press T, bring up the tab, look at my brushes, what have I got? I've currently got it set on a mid-tone gray, so currently it's 100% black, but if I drag over... I'm using this texture, by the way. It's not really hard to get one up, you just paint this in say Photoshop or GIMP or Krita, which I used. And then you just select the texture, go new. It'll create a new texture. You'll go over here. Now your texture panel, which is here under the properties, will likely be set to one of your material images. So we'll go away from the materials and go down to the brush texture. Then we will open an image and you'll go and find your texture. Currently I'll just switch back to this, which looks more realistic than just a plain round brush. So to paint wear and tear, if you can see I'm doing it live in this material panel, this UV editor, and I'll go over this. If you think it's too strong or not strong enough, you can make it stronger by adjusting the strength. Currently mine's on 100, but it's not a full strength because it's only on mid -turn. I'll set it to fully white, that'll be the strongest and will apply the most. You see when it's mid-tone grey it's applying 50-50 from each of these, but when it's 100% white it's applying 100% the second one. Scratch around the edges and, you know, just keep doing that until you're done. And then what you need to do is save the image. So if you quit Blender now it will not save this image, it'll be completely white. What you need to do is press save as image and then just call it the helmet FAC map, wherever you're going to put it. Remember, if you move the texture from the directory you save it in, Blender won't be able to find it next time and it'll, it'll just replace this green and white with a horrible pink because it has no idea what to do. So what you've got to do is either save it to the right directory first time or next time you open Blender, you're going to have to 
go into here and you're going to have to go and find the FAC map in the directory that you put it. And then every time after that, when you're using this, just when you paint, it's still going to edit the image further and it will not save. So what you can do, have to do every time you make a change or before you're going to exit Blender is you've got to go to image and press save image or just do some more and then hover over and press alt s. If you're making multiple images then you can just go save all images to make sure you've done it to everything and remember to do that every time you quit Blender. So I think that lesson is done. If you continued painting you'd eventually get what I had in the beginning or maybe you'd do it better, I don't know. But I think that's basically the lesson. So I hope you learned something today and have a good day. See you guys.